Today is March the 13th, 2018. My name is Tanya Finchin, and today I am in Moreland, Oklahoma, to speak with Elmer Maddox. And uh, did I say that correct? Yes. And along with me is Tom Lucas, as well as Rita Maddox, and they may chime in with a question or two if I forget to ask something. And this is part of our Oklahoma's Conservation Heritage Oral History Project, so thank you for letting me come today. It's a pleasure. <coughs> let's let's begin with let's begin with learning when and where you were born. Well, five and six thirty-four. In May of no, May sixth. May, May the sixth, thirty-four. Nineteen thirty-four. And where? Up the road here, about six miles. In Moreland. <laughs> yes, her and all in a country home. At home, okay. And did you have brothers and sisters? Yep. I've got a brother and two sisters. And where are you in the order? Oldest. You're the oldest. In charge. Never have been. <laughs> <laughs> and what did your parents do for a living? Farm. Good parents. They, uh, we lived. Well, I'll go back to a little of it only. You want to need this or not? But uh, when the FHA loans came out in '41, my daddy bought a farm with that program, and we lived over there for a number of years. Rode the school bus to Moreland, and uh, then after those kids got out of school, he just had the house moved down to Moreland. <laughs> And he lived down there. So where did you go to elementary school? A little school called Dillon, which was up there in the country. We walked across a mile of wheat field. We had a path to that school every day. Was it one room? Yeah. One teacher covered all? Yeah. What, six, eight grade, eight yeah. grades? And what would you take for lunch? Well, we took a sack or something in it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. It was before lunch was provided, so you had to take your own. Well, food. yeah, we took a paper bag, I'm sure. Carried it. Seemed like we had some old lunch boxes with a lid on them. That was I believe we carried them. Huh? Those old black ones that had the... Yeah. Um, aluminum or tin or something. Yeah, like just a tin one with a handle on top. They had a little that top was for a little thermos bottle, I think. You put it in it. <laughs> Did you have a favorite subject? No, probably A. <laughs> Would you have to do chores before you headed off to school? My goodness, you don't understand. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> yes, we milked the cows, fed the kids and everything and dressed and went to school. So you got up pretty early? Hey, my dad got me up for day. He did all of us. <laughs> I had a good dad. Well, how would he wake you up? I don't know. I was, we slept in the house and I got to think about this. You had to get up and build a fire. Yeah, I had to get up and build a fire in the, in the kitchen. Wood stove. Wood stove. Mm -hmm. And that started the day. And he always got me up to do it. He didn't. <laughs> but. <laughs> What, do you remember driving your first tractor and how old you were? Well, I probably wasn't very old with that. <laughs> I don't know that I did. Yeah, I might remember a little. An old W.C. Alice. Hmm. With a two autumn plow. And that field up there. Daryl Miller has it now, across that slope. And it was eroding pretty bad. And, uh, well, my first conservation work was deciding to put a waterway and terraces across that hillside. How old were you, she said. How old was? When you drove your tractor. 
when I started driving a tractor. I don't know, I wasn't over five or six. Barely in school then. Huh? Yeah, yeah, but dad didn't let any time slip by. <laughs> Good dad, I don't know. <laughs> That's fine. And in high school, did you were you involved with FFA or? Yeah, you... I went moved. We got we got consolidated with Moreland the year I become a freshman, and I had one teacher, and her name was Ray Widener, that uh, for four years in high school ag. Good man. He'd come out and do the showcase and all this stuff. Did you compete in the county fair? Yeah. What would be one of your projects? Well, showing them steers. Those cows. And you graduated from high school when? What year? 52. 52. And then what did you do? Well, in around about a year, and my friend and I have volunteered for the draft of the military to get it over with. That's a fact. His cell number was US54140059, and mine was 060. I was a 60. We volunteered the draft together. Army, Air Force, what? Army. Army. And so where did you spend your years of service? Most of my time was Fort Knox, Kentucky. I was a, was an engineer and I got, I took a year of typing in high school. Why? I have no idea. But every time I ended up somewhere, they stuck me at headquarters as a clerk. <laughs> Just as sure as I went in there. And I had a pretty good life doing that. Better than KP duty. Yes. Well, I run. I sat up there and run a lot of the company from headquarters a lot of the time. Life's good tonight. I had life just loaded me a good one. So how many words a minute could you type? Oh, probably three. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, if it, not if they put you there. <laughs> So after after the military, you came back to Moreland. Yeah. And take us what what was next? What did we do next? You married me, <laughs> <laughs> and we let, went to Colorado. Yeah. Because of the drought. And it was in '55, and we think we've had droughts, but it was oh, dry, God. man. I don't. I mean, it was dusty, dusty. And so you took a job in Colorado. Yeah, I just to feed to, the cows. To send money home to keep some feed for the old cows. Mm -hmm. so you okay. kept the property, but went and worked off the farm. Yeah. And did you did it get the year right of when you got married? Mm -hmm. Fifty five. Mm -hmm. And we sent home thirty five dollars every paycheck, and that was huge. Then. <laughs> Well, what were you doing in Colorado? What type of work? Trying, I uh, worked in the steel mill. Hmm. I had to have a job. In yeah. the 50s? Yeah. And how long were you there? Oh, most of the winter. So not, uh, not a year? No. So had to come back, huh? Well, this, I've got one of the finest I had one of the finest father-in-laws of any man ever walked. Mm. Excuse me. Sure. He just was top-notch of everything. And so you came back and worked for him. Came back and got a job for him, and married your daughter and took her away. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't take her too far. No, no. <laughs> he was. Unbelievably neat. There was just a little story I like to tell us. A number of widows, people with kids in the area that got groceries over at the Freedom Grocery Store. And 
somebody for years anonymously paid that bill. Her dad. Excuse me, I don't mean to get down the mood. That's okay. You're a good role model. <laughs> well, yeah. mm. was he a farmer as well? Yes. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, he he gave me opportunities above what any other father-in-law would ever gave anybody. And and what was his name? Jess Hepner. Jess. And then you can tell him about the when we bought that first place that was for sale. Was a, and he told you you could buy it. Yeah, one day we was working and I we on round over east here and that place is up the road twelve miles, so it's a distance. I told him that I'd like to go down there and see if I could rent that pasture from a cow that was in fifty five and things was very rough. And uh, I said, uh, they want to sell it. And he said, well, what do they want for it? And I said, $20 an acre. He said, well, buy it. <laughs> well, I couldn't have bought a corner post on it. <laughs> but guess what? He wrote a check one day. <laughs> That's the kind of fall law I've got had. And, and how many daughters did he have? Just one? He adopted me when I was six. They were all adopted. My two brothers were adopted too. Yeah, she's got two adopted brothers. They're, they're neat. So you bought your first farm in the 50s? Yeah. And Probably. how many, how many yeah. acres was it? Well, it was 1,200, I think. Wow, pretty. No, he, he didn't mess around when he done something. He did it. But then you got an FHA loan, FHA loan and paid him back. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. That all worked out good. So in high school, your plan was to be a farmer? Yeah. That's what you wanted to be? Well, I don't want to be anything else. We both have farm backgrounds. Okay. So my place and his. So not much left. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you said the first your first conservation work was deciding to go across the wheat uh, up the hill and do terracing. Well, that was one of the first big ones that I can come to my mind was putting that those terraces across, and I can take you. Of course, Darrell Miller now maintains it, but they're across that hillside yet, with the waterway down the middle. Hmm. And over the years, have you built ponds? Oh, I've done a lot of conservation work through the years. Hmm. Lots of miles of terraces and ponds, and I own a dozer. Pretty new dozer, in fact. Uh, that is my hobby, is to run that old dozer and build stuff. I like that better than, well, it's just fun. Playing in the dirt. Yeah. Or soil, I'm supposed to yeah. say soil. It's different from dirt. Yeah. <clears throat> and I understand you, you've taken on red cedars. I have cut a lot of red cedars down, <laughs> many of them. I've got a, a saw out here with a boom on it and a blade out on the end of about a 10 foot that goes up and down. But you can have an old cedar sitting there and that old blade, you can put it down there about in the dirt and you can just clean that old tree smooth. Mm. And I've done a lot of them. About how many acres have you cleared of red cedars? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know. What? We thought over twenty thousand the other day. Yeah. Is that about? That's a lot. Yeah, I've cleared a lot of cedars in my time. There's been a lot of trees go down. We've got a few in this house, if you'll notice. 
He cut. I cut all this wood. Let's see here. Oh, really? they're, they're solid. <laughs> oh. Well, back in the 50s, were they a problem, it's, or is it more uh, more recent? Why, well, cedar's always been a problem in the canyon where grass couldn't grow. <laughs> really? Well, they take up what water is there. Yeah, and those canyon bottoms is good soil and there's always good grazing there if, if you don't have cedar trees on. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good, good, good. It's amazing. amazing. Mm -hmm. All of it. What? Mm -hmm. The wood. Yeah. Well, I didn't near all of it. That old site, all that house out there is sited with cedar I cut. Mm -hmm. I saw the siding and put it on. That was back when we were young. In 79. <laughs> 79. Well, the, the negative impact of having the mother then, they grow wild wildflowers. Oh, yeah. Weeds. Just keep a good salt, keep them down. Mm -hmm. Just keep going back. And they come back. Right back. Well, did they interfere with cattle? Yeah. A cow can't eat cedar. Well, <laughs> Excuse I me, I didn't mean to be catty. <laughs> <laughs> they eat a lot of other things, though. But uh, yes, yes. And we've just... got a lot of them old cows around. That's our livelihood. Is. Well, I know they mess up. If you're filled with wheat, you don't want you don't want cedars there either. So I was just curious. The other negative impacts of them. Yeah. Well, at some point you, you did something off the farm for the city. The county commissioner. Yeah, huh? I think I have to put my county notes. Commissioner. You for county yeah. Yeah, I was county commissioner. I mean, I rode the commissioner a while. Two years. I, this old, you can talk about somebody, you know, having an area that's his, and, and I know that where ownership and everything is, but this old county from Moreland to the end, uh, that's been mine and is mine out here. <laughs> We've lived it, took care of it, loved it. And you were on the Woodward County Conservation District Board yes. for a long, long time. Yeah. I hate to tell you, but I think I was on there about 40 years before I went to the military. No, before you went to the legislature. Before, you before went, I went to legislature. Before you went to the Capitol. Yeah. That's it. Well, what are, some you, what are some conservation issues that are special or whatever for Woodward County that other counties might not have to deal with? What were some of the top issues you had to deal with? Well, I don't know how to come up with that answer. Well, drought, I'm sure, is one, but that's not yeah. other counties deal with that, too. Pretty view. Drought. It's pretty. I don't know. Have you had to deal with wild fires, prairie fires? Yeah, but they don't bother me much. Do they don't? It just gets another cedar tree. And we don't like cedar trees. <laughs> and they that, do, do they burn pretty quick? Yeah. Do they? Sometimes. And I've seen the fire burn under them and not even burn. They, they're a, mm -hmm. I've seen fire go across us and the cedar tree wouldn't burn. Just one of them burn under it and goes on. Because the wind is so high. Well, the wind blowing. Well, uh, well, that may be another issue out here is the wind, when the pan, getting toward the panhandle, the wind picks up. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... Well, how did you get involved with public service from, from the very beginning? What, what got you interested in that? Most Kings came and talked to you about. Yeah, my old representative was there 22 years. 
and I was there 16 following that. And he came one day and said, uh, Elmer, I'm not filing anymore for state representative, and I wished you would. And I said, no, I ain't about to do that, but I did. And I served. years. Before they had term limits? Yeah. Or I guess maybe when term limits just well, started going. Well, we enacted them. While you were there? Yeah, and, and I had to leave. I mean, I run my full <coughs> time. Okay. Well, what were some of the conservation issues you dealt with while you were at the Capitol? Maybe hog farms. Yeah, especially about the time that hog, hog farms. farms were becoming well, an issue. I'll tell this little story about the doing that stuff. I've been from ag, and they're just going to plumb out a lot of hog farms in Oklahoma. And been from ag, I just couldn't stand that. I mean, that's just, just ridiculous for a state not to be able to do that. And uh, I forgot where I'm going here. Well, that was just a big issue while you were in there. Yes, it was. And, and uh, well, I don't know. What it's I, about the time that Seaboard was coming, wanted to go into Gaiman. Yeah. It's about that same time yeah. period. People were afraid of getting in the water or, or I don't know I won't, I've got to keep my memory better well here it was the odor odor mm. yeah I remember I went to a toy show in Dyersville Iowa that's uh, Ertl Company that makes all these toys in and I went up to that toy show and rented a car and drove over there and drove into town and, and uh, the people I was going to visit lived up north of town and, and uh, <coughs> I drove Drove up to their house. Drove up to their house. One night, and we'd had hogs. There's an issue of hogs all over down here, you know, and people fighting it and going on. And I drove up to their house, and I was on one of the biggest hog farms you ever walked on to. <laughs> Good people. They come see us and stuff now, you know. Yep, they are. Good the people as we get. So you stood up for being able to have hog farms in Woodward County? Well, yes. yes. That'd be absolutely asinine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that to you. That's okay. I was reading that people would, there was a, a law that they could, if there was a park nearby, they couldn't have a farm, so a pig farm well, someplace. Yeah. So people would pop it up parks here and there just so they wouldn't build, yeah. build a pig farm. But I don't know that that bothered us much. Okay. Don't know that it did. Well, and then what the other issue I was reading about was watersheds. Was that part of something that was important in, in this county? Well, yeah, some. Uh, See, I gotta get my mind around that a little. Uh, well, I mean, that would have something to do with water flow and stuff too. Yes, so. it'd be with uh, with some of these dams on these yeah. on these uh, creeks or canyons. Mm -hmm. We've got well, there's a several them things I built in time mm -hmm. of. I've got them. some lakes right over here that I built the dams for, and uh, 
they're they're big and they, they back water for a mile up this mile out here. Pretty good conservation practice. So you used your dozer to make these dams? Oh yeah. Yourself? Yeah. It's uh in fact, I bought a new one this year. <laughs> it's uh they're not cheap. In fact, uh, they're about three hundred and forty thousand dollars, I think. Mm. But then they'll last a long time, won't they? You have to take care of them. Yeah. And I'm the operator. It's uh, something I like very well. You sit here in a seat with a lever here and a lever here, and this one turns and drives that dozer wherever you want to go. And this one here will put that blade any angle or position you want. And you can do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And doing that is, might not call it a hobby, but I sure enjoy it. Well, you're making improvements on the land. So oh, yeah. Pays for itself in the long run. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they air conditioned? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, would your father-in-law say, what, what would he have to say about that? <laughs> I don't know, he was a pretty, pretty uh, modern day man, I mean, oh. he done a lot of good things. Kind of hard to have a farmer's tan if you're in a cab. Yeah, but I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes. Well, now they're so fancy, you can't really work on them yourself, can you? Not really. Yeah, tell them about them calling from Oklahoma City. Huh? Tell them about calling, getting the call from Oklahoma City. On? On your dozer. They called you and said it was heating. Yeah, well, it got so much. Technology. Technology anymore, and and this got this new dozer, and it was running a little warm. And uh, I called the dealer, Kirby Smith, and said he's having a little problem. Well, uh, they sent mechanics out here, and in a little bit they had everything right. And when they called you and told that it was heating, you got that wrong. They called from the city yeah. and said your dozer is heating, and yeah. we're coming out here. And they and he said we were going to tell them where it was at, and they said we know where it's at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had it on it's GPS. Just, you sorry. know, just drove to it. <laughs> so that could be good and bad, I suppose. <laughs> Oh, I can't. You can really control what's going on. Yeah, you know where you are at any time. <laughs> well, back in the 50s, they started the Great Plains Conservation Program. Do you remember much about that? If you. Well, if they started, I probably wouldn't have started to help start it. In this part, anyway? Mm hmm. And then the soil bank. Started about that same time, looks like. Okay, soil bank. You gotta think about that a minute. I don't know about that one. Huh. I mean, it might not. It might not have been something that was in, here in Woodward County. A soil bank. Just a minute. <clears throat> Elmer, that's the one you put it in for ten years, and you got ten dollars an acre yeah. a year. Okay. It was when Eisenhower was president when that came in. Okay. And the Great Plains program started right before that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so did you put any of your land into it? Well, I'm sure. I don't remember that did. <laughs> well, was your father or father-in-law involved with the conservation district in, in Woodward County? Yeah. They were on it before before you were, or yeah. Think about that. Huh? 
My dad was involved. With what? Soil conservation. Well, I don't know what he was. Well, that's what she asked him. And mine either, as far as I direct. Yeah. Okay. From what I can gather, 1969 was a pretty good year for you. What all happened? <laughs> what all happened? Yeah. Let's see. The J.C. Farm Family of the Year. Yeah. Uh, and then in 70 was the State Farm Family of the yeah. Year. And you had a, went to a banquet and the uh, former OSU president was there, Wilhelm. Yeah, Wilhelm. yeah. Do you remember any of that? Oh, faintly. You were young, 35 years old, young farmer of the year. It had been at that time they said you were doing a lot of soil and water conservation. So you'd had your farm about 15 years or so. I by, suppose, by that, yeah. By that point. You had all sorts of things, I guess. And then roughly around that time was when you were on the board, so you were the director from 64 to 86 of the Woodward County Conservation. Okay. Does, does that sound right? Probably. <laughs> well, I don't know for sure. Okay. I'm you, sorry. Well, you, can't, you can't believe everything you see on the web either, so I'm just, I'm just yeah, checking. Yeah, sure. Yep. And then there was a point in, that, that New York City wanted to bring their sludge out here. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah? <laughs> and How did we do with that? What did we do with that? <laughs> you said no, but I don't know what all that entailed. I don't remember either. I don't either. No. <clears throat> that was a pretty big deal. Sounded like. It was. I remember that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, why would they? Uh, Moreland of all places, but mm -hmm. they thought they could pull something off. Anywhere we get rid of it up there. And then in the 80s, there was a farm crisis. Do you, do you remember the 80s, what, what you might have been doing? Well, by that time, you were in the legislature, weren't you? In the 80s? Yeah, 80. We built this house in 79 and 80. And then we had a hailstorm. That Three hailstorms that got all of our wheat. Yeah. In all directions. If you think you've got everything all wrapped up, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> it hailed everything we had till the, the straws run down the canyon. I mean, we're so scattered, that's a good insurance, but we got three hails and it went every direction. <laughs> that was 1980. Was it? Wow. And then I don't know after that. <laughs> you had crop insurance to help? With, through that, so I don't think we did it then. Not not that then, at that point. I'm not sure when crop insurance became more prominent for farmers. I don't either. I don't know. I don't know. I got a license, but I don't remember. You have what, Ronnie? <laughs> a license agent. Yeah. But I don't know when that started. Yeah. Well, what are some of the different tillage practices you have on your place? Do you do no, do you do any no-till or? Yeah, a little bit. Not much, Elmer. We farm our stuff. Oh, let me get back here. My... You did no-till one time down there at Moreland. Yeah. And you didn't like it. That's an answer. <laughs> and then what about medium till? I'm not sure what that is, but I came across that terminology too. Medium, medium till. till. No till, medium till, and then minimum till. I would think no till and minimum till would be really well, close. Well, they're pretty close, I guess. She likes to farm ours. <laughs> yeah. I, we've... Well, I guess Nell Mundell was. So, did you do contour terracing or just terracing? There's not, you have to have hills, I guess, to have contour. Well, we had them. Do you? 
lots of them. And uh, I mentioned a while ago that these places that some of them old original tires are still right there across the hill. And uh, if you, you probably won't realize this, but uh, if growing up, those old hills and ditches was terrible down hillsides up where we farmed up here. And that little five foot combine, now that's 60 inches, that's not six foot combine. You pull them around them ditches with an old WC tractor and try to cut that wheat out. And you don't know what farming is yet. He try some of that. It's, it was just a good piece of life, I guess. So tell her about why you farm now, with your big tractors and the plows and the stuff. But. Well, they may not seem too glorified, but we have two 500 horsepower tractors and. Uh, I've got uh, boys that drive them. And my great grandson drives one of them all summer and does one way of the job of farming. Can get it done a whole lot quicker. Yeah. And how many feet? Are they 50 feet? You're, yeah, most of them are 50 foot now. Versus 60 inches? Mm hmm. Wow. A lot less trips. Oh, well, yeah. Um, you have to get some economy in this thing somewhere. Well, the the larger equipment would mess up the terraces, wouldn't they, if they were made with for the smaller? Well, a little, but if you go parallel through your field, you're in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. You follow up? If, if well, because it it will bend, break your equipment. Yeah, flexes. <laughs> so you've been farming over, if I do my math, 60 years? 60 something years? Well, yes, and that's too long, I bet. He says he's been farming 70 some. <laughs> he's 84 and you started when he was a kid. When he was a kid, yeah. Well, in that, in that span of time, what's big, the biggest Invention from from your your point of view from farming. Biggest invention. Yeah. Hmm. Herman Harper would say rubber tires. <laughs> well, he would probably. <laughs> Them old steel wheels would yeah. shook you pretty much. Yeah. Herman. <laughs> Probably the cabs and air conditioning and the heating. Yeah. <laughs> and what? Air conditioning and heating that you don't have to get out in the elements. That's right. <clears throat> Just, it's not that bad on a man. That's it. No, the only thing you really can't, can't control is the weather. That's right. And I don't want to. <laughs> well, when you for, were first starting, who did the bookkeeping? <laughs> Didn't have as much then as we do now. That's what, kept it on pencil and paper. Yeah, we used to have it in a shoe box and now we got it in a year's business. And, <laughs> and now it's on computer, or, I guess. Yeah, yeah of course. She yeah. does a wonderful job with that bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. She really does. We didn't have to do all that one back then mm -hmm. that we do now. <laughs> Didn't have to pr prove to IRS that we really bought that much diesel or that much gas. <laughs> so IRS is a big problem. I got a master time limit. <laughs> well, all good old regulations come in, come in and go yeah. out sometimes and change and all that. Yeah. Keeping up with all of that could be a challenge. Yes. But 
somehow or another we put her together. Well, you get some, you get some uh, benefits other than financial from being part of the conservation. Yeah. Uh, some trade-offs there too, I guess. Yes. Yeah, that. Uh, There's a piece of that I wanted to tell, I forgot about it. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> you replay it in your and see what what you want to talk about for conservation. Well, we could talk about the Oklahoma Association of Conservation Districts. You were the Area One director for a couple of years. Yes. You just finished, I guess, with that. In, in that role, what would you do? Say that again. Let me get my thought on this. The Oklahoma Association of Conservation Districts. You were the Area One director? Yes. For 2015-2017? Yes. What would you do in that role? Well, basically, chair meetings. I guess. Yeah. No controversies? Yeah. You're not doing anything if you don't have some controversy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe you're doing too well if you if you don't have any. I don't know what the hot topics are these days for conservation. Well, what? Because mm -hmm. it's always the drought for Oklahoma weather. Yeah. Oh, we could talk about, did you, you had, you were responsible for developing the idea of a state cost share program? Did that yeah. ring, ring any bells? Yeah. Mainly I chaired that stuff. Well, that's making sure everybody's doing what they're supposed yeah. to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were in the legislature, you were, you, Bellman was governor, Walters was governor, Keith. Yeah, Keaton. I went through several governors. Like, like four at least, if you were there 16. Yeah. 16 years. Bellman, Walters, and Keating. And, uh -huh. and George and I, he, he, was he there? Yeah, he was. Huh? Is George and I still there? I don't know for sure. And then Brad Henry was yeah. at, toward the end. Toward he the was end. there in 80, George was there in 81 and 82. Okay. So. Do you remember much about Bellman? 1017, yeah. you can re you remember that part. <laughs> yeah, I remember. He was, I liked him a lot. Just, just, the guy he was, you know. I don't know what else. Was. Ten seventeen. Remember the issue that when he came to your office to get you to change your vote. Oh. Tell him a little long. You no, know, you. He tried to get you to change your vote on an issue. Yeah. Ten seventeen. The that was Is a, that the, the old big school education one? Mm -hmm. Well, I just reached up and punched the button. Yeah, but you didn't change your vote. But I mean, that was a big thing with him coming to you. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of his big, one of Bellman's big things was the education thing. Yeah. He was a farmer, though, so I figured yeah. you might, might connect, well, connect on that point. Well, we did quite a little. He was over there east of England, off to the north of the little town. Billings. Billings, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked Henry. Yeah, he told him. I've read a story where he, he, he had to have his tractor worked on, and he didn't have the funds to have it shipped back to his farm, so he drove it back from the 
dealership to his farm. Uh huh. Right. Typical Henry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about Walters, so I don't know. About what? Governor Walters. Other than he almost got impeached, or did he? he something about impeached. I don't remember now. Walter. You, got, remember that, you got that big prison in Alabama while he was governor. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, you did? <laughs> <laughs> How did you swing that? Well, mm -hmm. what did I do all? <laughs> I can't remember exactly. <laughs> it's out there. I don't know. I'm running out of thoughts here. Probably running out of oxygen. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, do you, do you remember anything about cloud seeding? Well. Keating was, Keating was trying to do that with the rainy day fund and yeah. seeding clouds. That doesn't work too well, does it? No. I didn't think that it did. That was in 96. 96. Mm -hmm. And then in 97, you bought a, you bought a treasure in 97 according to this. A treasure. Yeah. And I, I, an antique threshing machine. Yeah. Yeah. According to this. Yeah. And had a, a quail shoot for people in the legislature. With yes. Water. We did that quite a little bit. We had... Uh, oh, we're on the hill still sets a, a blue rock drawer. And... It's still there, and the guys throw those blue rock and sit over there and break them. And boy, there's some good shots there. They break nine out of ten that you threw. <laughs> well, tell her how they came out here. Huh? They came. Tell her how the legislators came out here every year, and you hosted the hunting. Area farmers took them. Yeah. And then we cooked all the steaks for them out in the barn. Yeah. Different farmers would host them for the day, take them hunting. Mm -hmm. And then they would all come back in here, starting in the middle of the afternoon, mm -hmm. and talk about their hunts. And Have orders. And they enjoyed it pretty good. And hopefully make some deals. Yeah. Answer some questions or at least get some. Some of them would drive out here nothing but for dinner. <laughs> and anything else would come for dinner. Uh, and then later you were, uh, did a, you proposed a house bill to get bird habitats to improve, preserve bird habitats. So game, hunting game birds would, that's part of the economy for Oklahoma. I yes, guess. definitely. So habitats is just as important as getting rid of cedars, I guess, isn't it? Well, yes. <coughs> Did you ever have trouble getting other farmers on board with something that they're trying to do conservation-wise? I don't think in general, no. Because it usually involves money if you're trying to get them to switch what you do something else would be finding that balance I don't think so and then you served on the federal land bank mm -hmm. what would you do for that I'm not familiar with federal land bank help me a minute well you just had board decisions to make loans Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. For farm people wanting to buy. Yeah, they had to be approved. Somebody had to do that. Yeah. Yes and no, huh? Yeah. How did you get how did you get started on your farming museum? That may be something you could answer. You and Roger went shopping the day after Christmas. Yeah, but what did we do? 
all the toys was on sale, and you went around buying them all. Yeah, yeah. we went. Okay. Tell her about it. Huh? Tell her. You and your brother. <laughs> well, I got to get my thoughts on it. He was. He was here for Christmas. Yeah. It was the day after Christmas, and him and his brother decided to go toy shopping because there was a big sale after Christmas. Yeah. So they come home with a carload of little toy tractors. And, yeah, and a full load. And then that was the beginning. He got the bug, huh? Well, pretty bad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and about how many do you have now, roughly? Oh, you don't. 3,800. Oh, gosh. <laughs> or something like that. But that's over 30 70, 40, 40, since 1970. 40 something years? Oh, it's not too bad, then. No. It's... Do you have a favorite one? Yeah. If you could only keep one, what would it be? Uh, yeah. It's a John Deere combine made by Bindex down there. Pulled by D. John Deere tractor. And what makes it special? Well, it's a little rare. And it's, uh, uh, very good replica of the real. Mm -hmm. And it's valuable. Yeah, it's probably as valuable a toy as there is sitting in the country. Well, do you have a, a one from the very first tractor you drove? Do you have a, a, a toy from... I see, that'd be the WCLs. I'm sure you do. <laughs> There's probably not too many you don't have, huh? Well, there's quite a few. Uh, quite a few down there. The good Lord just gave me a lot of good awesome. things. Well, we can get back to conservation. Is there some high points in, in your farming career that come to mind for things that's happened in, around conservation? What happened on sun, Sunday, Monday? What was this award that, that he got? Uh, at risk. At risk. What? It, it was the Elmer Maddox Advocacy Award for Conservation Advocacy. And they named the award after him, he's the first recipient, and every year <clears throat> they're going to call it the Elmer. And every year they will pick the advocate of the year and with well, those practices and that needs Elmer. acknowledged. That's a pretty big honor. It's a good honor, it don't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've been an advocate for a long time for conservation? Yeah. Oh, yes. In the county and across the state. Yes. And at the Capitol. And at the Capitol, yes. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about it? Well, I, I think it's, <clears throat> it's really a great honor for Elmer that he deserves. And the good thing about it is that every year they'll be given an award in his honor. So. It will go on, you know. That's a pretty good step. That's a good step. And I'm very proud of it. Mm -hmm. Very much so. I've got family and kids that just as I got two great grandsons that's the finest leaders you ever seen. Mm -hmm. And are any of them farmers, ranchers? Well, one of them runs a tractor here all summer and farms a lot of land for me. A little one. So he would have some idea about conservation issues then? Why, yeah. If he's under he'd probably write a story. <laughs> listen, listening to you. Never yeah, got the dozer stuck one day up there on one of our places way down in the canyon and everybody's gone. So he calls me to come 
pull him out. I said, not me. <laughs> so I, I think Caden was about nine then. And he got that big tractor and went down in the canyon. And pulled that old <laughs> old and drug that son of a bitch back out there on some solid ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I go back and look at that, how scary it was driving way down in there. <laughs> Good family. Mm -hmm. So about how many acres do you have now, roughly? Oh, well, <laughs> 21,000 or something. Well, and most of it's for cattle, or do you still do wheat or? Both. Both. I'd say about 5,000 is, is wheat, and the rest is. It's mother cows. We got 600 mother cows. And that's, uh, Pretty proud of them. They're the they're the foundation of this place. Yeah. Well, with that many acres, you've got lots of different soil types and terrains and we do we runs, do runs the gamut. I would we imagine. We do. And the Cimarron River looked like it was pretty close to here when I was looking at it. The map. Yeah. It's pretty real close to your Walker place. Yeah, we have uh, I'll get this straight. There's a, up, our main headquarters was where she used to live, which is north of here, 12 mile. And there's a road goes across over there to it. And, and uh, they built a new bridge the other day, and it's, I'm gonna call it my bridge, because it's across creek that comes from way up, way up, uh, oh, south, east, yeah, southeast, and comes down to it. It's pretty nice. Well, put your title on there, Elmer's Bridge. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there was someone going, getting ready to go into farming, what advice would you give them today? Ooh. <laughs> Don't do <Nope>. it. <laughs> well, it's, it's not smooth. But it's been a good life, so how do you balance that argument with them? I don't know, but balance that. That's a good question. <laughs> it's probably because you had your parents farm and I had mine. And if you're starting from scratch, I'd say you can't do it. You can't do it. Because you've got to get a lot of volume. And it's just... It's just yeah, my old father-in-law was an age. It's say just not going to work. <laughs> well, given your property here, how many acres can one... How many, how many cows per acre, I guess, is the... How many? 20. Do 20? Takes a... Takes a few acres, doesn't it? It takes a few acres, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, that's a pretty good, wouldn't you say, Tom? Yeah, it is. I, I think, one, is you all had family help, but at the same time, you got into farming at a time that was a good time to get into farming because we've seen land values and values increase. Yeah. But the other side, the the other part of that is you all have been the benefit of that, but you've been good managers in the process. So I uh, you caught it at the right time, but yes, you were good managers. Yes, timing was so good, and and uh, I worked for him. And I'm going to say. But like wheat now is so cheap mm. that it, the cost factor just doesn't fit. You buy $350,000 tractors and implements of the same for $3 wheat. Yeah. And it just doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. 
And then you depend on weather, light. For cattle to pasture off this year, we haven't had that because the wheat hasn't grown. It's too dry. So, no guaranteed scenario, is it? Is well, there's no guarantee. If there was, we wouldn't be in the business. <laughs> Choose from back east to own it all. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> Hey, when you were in the legislature, you served with Betty Boyd. Does that name ring any bells? Yep. Betty. First grandmother to serve in, the, in Oklahoma. All right, all right. First grandmother. I think that's right. Pretty Probably much. is. Yep. And you did something with the Pork Council? On many occasions, you... Gave them advice. We were on Team Parsons. Poor people. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have pigs, though, and you're, you don't raise pigs. No. You do cattle. Oh. Help me with that, my little. Well, That's okay. And, and here's when I was looking for research on looking you up, I found a, a quote I really liked that you said in 1987. So that's been 30 years ago. You want me to read it? Yeah, okay. For a man or a boy on a tractor in the field, there's nothing on his mind for eight or 10 hours a day except that tractor. You grow together. There's some part of you that is part of that tractor. You remember? <laughs> that's, uh, like does that, that sound like something you would say? Well, I suppose, yeah, I would guess. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was pretty neat because you are out there in the field for, well, maybe not on a... Not on these new tractors, you're not there, not there all day long. But on the older ones, you take a while. Yeah, yeah, we spend a lot of time. There. And you couldn't program the old ones to circle for you, so you could read or do whatever no, you wanted no, while it was you going. Had to, let's see. You still can't with our terraces. Well, I guess if you had big flat square fields. You could. You know, some some talk about that being able to to read a book while they goes around. You know? Yeah. What do you pay much attention to, like the mesonet? Keep up with weather from day to day to to know what you're going to do on the on the farm. Oh, some, but it's. Oh yeah, you have to have some kind of guide a little bit mm -hmm. to keep you down the right row. Yeah, look out the window and see if there's a cloud in the sky, then yeah. go if it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what's next? Any other toys on your wish list or? Oh, there'll always be a toy on the wish list. <laughs> I want to, I want to show you or somebody show you a little bit. Okay. But no more big dozers. You've got your you've got a dozer. It's going to do you for a while. Yeah. yeah. But then's my then's my. And, unless you get it stuck in the. Can't, <laughs> can't get it out. <laughs> well, when you're out out on your tractor, do you have a cell phone or something that you keep in touch? Phone. Well, you'd have to if you called her for help. Yeah. 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 And you wouldn't have had that 30 or 40 years ago. No, 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 no. So if you'd have got it stuck then, what would you just get out and walk? Dig it out. Dig it out. I had it. I got a story a little bit about that. Old Man Walker, Simpson Walker. We was cutting down on the <laughs> bottoms down in the, oh, down on Doe Creek. And that old man would cut them cut logs and we'd run that old dozer out on that quakey ground and I went down there one morning and that old man woke that thing out 
he dug in there behind that and buried them logs and backed that dozer up on it and made a log trail out of there and it was sitting out on the ground. The ingenuity of some of them old guys is they didn't get there but just being dummies. That's <laughs> true. You can feel it. Yeah, you figure it out, don't you? I never heard of that. I hate this. Well, we've covered a lot. Is there anything else you want to add before I ask my last question? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to add. You don't know? Do you have any? Nope. Good. I usually finish up with having people tell me, when history's written about you, what would you like for it to say? How do you want to be remembered? <laughs> That's the toughest question of the day. Yeah. I guess just remembered as a good conservationist. Honest and integrity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good yeah. neighbor. Yes. All of those, huh? Yes. A good husband and good dad? Yeah. I've got a good family. I told you that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful family. And a good shepherd for the land. Yes. Yep. Well, that's a good way to end. Thank you for sharing with us today. Well, well it's been a pleasure. I haven't been anything bad about this one. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Okay, round two. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I understand a few years ago you had a, our heart transplant. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? How it came about? I'm not getting my thoughts together. Well, was it you were out of the legislature or were you still in the legislature? I just you? left. Okay, and, and you for some reason you went to the heart doctor, right? Yeah. You had a stress test. And Okay. Yeah, you, you had <clears throat> you had surgery. You had heart surgery. Yeah. Hour after they <clears throat> they found blockages and stuff off when you had the stress test. Yeah. And I think that it was kind of urgent that you get down there so they yeah. could do something. Yeah, they called and we drove right down there that afternoon and, and uh, they took me down to surgery nine o'clock in the evening i don't know why it's a little late but i woke up the next day they had me in a room teaching me to walk i mean they just went they matched you up with a donor do you know anything about the donor? Yeah. Let's see. Elmer, he's a young man. Yeah. Uh, or was a young man at the time. And. Well, I got. Out of that, I had. 11, 12 years, as good a life as anybody ever walked. And you still stay in touch with the family of yes. the donor? Yes. The mother, Mary, she's... Keeps up with you. Yes. Wants to know where Michael's heart is. Oh, gosh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, I think Elmer and Rita can go down and take those folks out to dinner every once in a while. Oh yeah, we got good relations yeah. with them. And they just, uh, I don't know. Life is good to me, I just. It has been. Yes. Yep. I would agree. Two great grandsons, as fine boys as anybody ever had. And I'd say they love you. Yeah, and I, I just think the world of them. They both were trying to be captains of their team. We're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. 
And that youngest one one night was trying to get to carry the ball on the team. And they were in his way and nothing was working. And he come out of that thing and went behind the team which he was supposed to go through the line on. Coming out, went all the way around there and by the end and just made a touchdown. <laughs> I got good, I, my, my grandkids is, I got a family that's unsurpassed. All right, we'll close off again then.